the place for comic book and anime reviews. Hey there, you guys! Welcome to the Rainbow Campbell 12 YouTube channel. Play for your comic book anime reviews. And today, you guys, doing a topic video because we are going to be doing a roll of bleach content for the next few weeks. Um, because of the recent chapter that came out, I kind of want to just talk about bleach related stuff uh, in an interesting way. So, what I want to talk about this day, I want to talk about um, bleach's use of female characters. And I kind of also want to throw in Jisoo Kaiser into this because I, there, as y'all remember, there was an interview a while back that got mistranslated between Taisei Kubo and Gege Akatame. Um, in which there's a whole thing in there about Kubo kind of brought up female characters. Um, the question was there, like, does Kubo like to use a kind of female character? And originally this was mistranslated to say, oh, Kubo only cared about boob size or whatever, which, yeah, if he did only care about boob size, I mean, I feel like these kind of, like, girls are pretty, they have breasts, I mean... Anyway, and there was that whole thing about... Anyway, no, that's another conversation for another time. Um... But what was actually said by him was he was, he was bringing up the fact, the personalities of um, the Juicy Kind character. He was acting like comparing them to the male characters and saying Juicy Kind and girls are all very similar in their personalities. Um, which is very interesting because if you look at all the characters in Bleach, um, they all do are very different. Like Orihime is very different from Rukia, who's very different from Yorichi. Who's very different from um, Rangiku to a lesser extent? Um, they they all have very different dynamics, and um, and I do kind of understand where Kubo is coming from with Jujutsu Kaisen's character, who are really great. I love Jujutsu Kaisen's female characters a lot. Um, they're all very interesting, but from where we were, at least in the anime, um, they do they all are generally in the general standpoint just very strong female characters. Um, they're, they're, they're very, they're, they have very physical strength, they have a lot of power, um, they kind of, like, have the you know, independent spirit within them, and I really liked it about them, um, and I think from a very surface level standpoint, um, uh, they're, they're fun to be around, um, but I can understand Kubo being, like, because if you look, if you do look at, um, Yuji Chidori and... Uh, the, his other friend Fujimoto, I believe his name is, um, like they are so far differently from each other in personality. They are very, very different. Uh, and this is also the part of the problem that like Jujutsu Kaisen kind of doesn't hasn't um, really gone in depth on its female characters as much. Like we haven't really got a whole lot. We got like one single episode in the anime about them. And we didn't see their difference in their difference in ideology, but we didn't get to see much of the difference in personality, um, at least yet. Um, even though I see, I do think I like them a lot, uh, and there are like loads in their personality that make them each different in their own respect. But they don't have that vast difference in the same way we do with the male character. Like Gojo is very different from Yuji, like extremely different from Yuji in a lot of ways. I, you know, no one's having this conversation about this um, because of that mistranslation. Like, the, I think this is the more interesting conversation because it also goes to how I think Japan perceives its female characters a lot of times. Um, I've, I was watching One Piece recently and I was just watching how um, there's something just strange about the way One Piece does its female characters as well. I mean, One Piece has been around for a long time, and so naturally, with the world is changing, um, they're looking at what they use of female characters are going to also evolve and be different as well. Uh, and a lot of people criticize One Piece in a lot of areas for its sexualization of characters as well, which is also prominent in Bleach. Uh, and also prominent in a lot of anime in general, but Jujutsu Kaisen also kind of doesn't have that problem as much, despite also still having a conversation about butts. I mean, it's still there in Jujutsu Kaisen, but it's not as prominent. You don't see as much fan service in Jujutsu Kaisen as you would in, like, the big three show. Uh, and that is, it, these are very noticeable in the series. Um, no one has gotten to that point with the scene where we got, like, a Naruto level issue, though. 
Um, I think for like Naruto probably had its worst female characters. Um, there's always still a attempt to really make them strong in a lot of these series. Uh, but I feel like Naruto probably failed the most in a lot of his ways. Uh, with all the girls being, for the most part, healers. With some exceptions, like I think Kaguya, who was like a last minute villain at the very end of the series. So, does that really count? Does that really count if you're like the last minute um, villain? Um, but yeah, a lot of characters in the series tend to uh, have different issues. They have different positives and different negatives. Um, but there is usually an attempt made to try and subvert expectations with these female characters. Um, but sometimes it doesn't always succeed. I think, I do think that Bleed does a really good job, for the most part, with a lot of its female characters and how their dynamics work as far as personality, um, backstory, characterization, things like that. Um, we even had that whole thing with Noritori and Neo um, in the Bleed series where the, um, your Noritori was being very misogynistic towards Neo. And Neil kind of always still hung around him. And there was that whole dynamic of, like, the fact that, you know, Nail, Nor Nortor wanted to look down on that, but he couldn't look down on that because she was so much stronger and Nail was able to look down upon him. Uh, which probably created this internal misogyny um, in Noritor a lot of way through because of Nail. Um, because of the fact that Nail looked down on him. Um, you know, kind of, kind of like, uh, what's it called? Incelly. It's very incelly for Noritora. Um, but it's also very notable in the series as well. I think that's, I think it's really interesting to look at it in that form of way. Uh, yeah, I just, I think the Bleach cast is, has a lot of great female characters within it. Um, and it's a very different approach than Jutsu Kaisen's approach. To female characters. Um, they each have their own positives and negatives and they each have their own um, goods and bads. Uh, I think the thing that Jesus kind of was, I think a lot of anime tend to really push this idea of having a diverse cast. I think that's one of the big things in anime in general, like not just with female characters. I think having a cast that's very different, very multi-layered cast is very important in any series. And I think that's usually what I think Japan really leans into with its anime. Um, is having these very diverse casts of characters within them. Uh, I think that tends to be extremely important uh, in all these series. And I think they do a really good job in that respect in creating these very interesting and very dynamic characters in a lot of ways. Uh, but yeah, that's pretty much my thoughts on this topic, you guys. Um... Then what do you guys think about this? Um, what do you guys feel about these female characters in Bleach, Jutsu Kaisen, Naruto, just in Shonen in general? Um, in the comments, let me know in the comments below and I will catch you guys later. Peace out.